Greetings and stalagmites, everyone. Uh, today I am doing better. Uh, my foot's feeling better. <clears throat> I do want to kind of get straight to the point. Uh, today I'm going to try something that I hopefully will be doing each week. Uh, there is a podcast called This Week in Tech. Uh, it seems like there is a number of different vlogs or tech talks or stuff, or things of that nature talking about the the week in review or just talking about what's happened lately. Um, and since I can't always come up with something to talk about, because I don't often have something to talk about, um, I figured I would go over some of the things that I have either seen or read this week that were interesting to me and possibly might be interesting to you as well. <clears throat> One that came up in particular that I actually just tweeted or uh, shared today was uh, Tech Syndicate did a video on, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, did a video on how they had, the video had been done just before Netflix paid Comcast to, to uh, stream their content, essentially, which is opening, and I agree with uh, the guys over at Tech Syndicate that it's opening the doors for these monopolies, especially Comcast now that it's going to own Time Warner, to just, no, we don't want to, it's just, we don't want to, we don't want to have to deal with the fact that our network is saturated, so we're going to charge not only you, but we're charging the customer. It's like everybody is making the monopoly is going to make twice the money. So not only does, am I going to pay for Netflix, <clears throat> but I'm going to pay for Comcast too. And Comcast is going to charge Netflix. And then, I mean, Netflix isn't only paying for the Amazon cloud that they have all their media and data in, but they're also going to end up paying the provider that it resells the internet. So it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I'll put the link in the notes below, but share that message. Um, we need to get the word out there that this just doesn't. It's one thing for the government to get into the to get into the internet and get its nose into things that it doesn't even understand, but now it's just it almost feels like Comcast is just falling back on idiocy and going, well, I don't think we can do this. No, you can, and 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 if you've noticed any issues, I know I had previously and still do sometimes trying to watch anything on Netflix where it just sits there and streams or it takes a long time for it to pull up the stream, and even then it doesn't come into HD for a period of time. There's no excuse for it. You're get, You're supposed to be getting 50 megs or 100 meg or whatever the case may be for your pipe, and it... It shouldn't take that long, and it also should be um, it should be seamless. It shouldn't be one of those things where you have to wait. Okay, and now the show's playing, but you see it in essentially 480p for like five minutes before you get get the HD stream. It shouldn't be that way. Um, and the fact that Comcast is charging Netflix for that to work, it no, you guys can't double dip that way. Um, so that's one thing that I thought I'd cover this week. Um, other things that are not as perhaps interesting or big in the news. Um, the, f the second one being there was an article on Ars Technica about, uh, if you search for it, you could search for it by any of these words, the day the Mario Kart died, Nintendo's kill switch and the future of online consoles. Nintendo is going to, in a few we sorry, in a few months, uh, in in May, going to shut off Wi-Fi for the Wii and the DS. So what that means is that wonderful Mario Kart game that you love playing on the Wii, you're not going to be able to play it with other people via wireless anymore. And same thing goes for the, those of you who have a DS. Yes, it's forcing people to go to the next gen. But for Nintendo, it seems like a bad move because your Wii, your Wii U sales were gruesome compared to any, any other console you guys had sold or made in the, in the past 
what, two, three decades? And now you're going to force people to, that, you're going to force people to move to a console that, well, let's face it, it's been out for quite a few months, longer than any of the other next gen systems, and it has a few games out. And the arcade for it isn't as big as it was for the Wii. I mean, you could easily, it doesn't make any sense why you, they don't just move everything that was in the arcade or the virtual console, I believe it is, and just move it over to the Wii U virtual console. And to give you an example, um, if you register, there's a program they have where you have points, uh, or where you register your games or your items or things that you bought through Nintendo and you register them for points. And then you can use those points to redeem for, like, uh, virtual console games, for instance. Or, <coughs> uh, the, uh, or accessories. Uh, like, there's a, uh, there was a controller holder, um, just various little things, accessories. Or games. So, I took the opportunity, you know what? I like old games. Super Mario RPG was on there. Go ahead and go grab that. Oh, well, it turns out that that's not actually for the Wii U Virtual Console. It's for the Wii Virtual Console, which there is. It's essentially, it seems like it's re, when you do, when you go into the Wii mode for the Wii U, it essentially reboots, goes into what looks like the Wii, which pretty much is, and then you have to use classic controllers. And not just the controllers that you bought for the Wii U, but you actually have to go out and get basically the classic control, the classic uh, Wii motes. And then, not in addition to that, get a classic controller on top of it. So, in addition to the console I paid for, the game I paid for, or the games that I paid for to redeem these points, redeem the points for a game that I'd love to play. So there, so let's, let's say that I didn't even spend the points or anything like that. Let's say, let's say I bought all of these things. Bought the console, bought the, the virtual console game for the Wii, and bought the controller, bought an extra controller in case another friend wants to play on the Wii U. Oh, okay, now I've gotta buy two more accessories, controllers, about another 50 bucks, on top of a $10 game, which I'm be- is betting is what they're charging, because most of the virtual console games aren't 2 $3. It's not the way it works. They think that, or, well, they get away with the fact that you're, ch- they're paying, or they're charging 10 20 bucks, usually 10 15 bucks a pop for games that came out 20 years ago. Yeah, they may be in demand, but that doesn't give you guys rights to go throwing, basically gouging people f- for profit. It doesn't... <sighs> anyway, to get back to the point, <laughs> so games like um, the Mario Kart for the Wii or Mario Kart on DS, which both are fun, um, any of um, the other games... Uh, do, 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 like Animal Crossing, uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl loses functionality. So, good job, guys. Given you've got three months, well, two months now, but two and a half months. May 20th is the date, supposedly. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, guys. It seems like you're shooting yourself in the foot. <clears throat> and there have been, uh, Developers or companies in the past that have shut off their servers for wireless game play. Uh, I think uh, Resident Evil was one of them. I can't recall which game it was, but the online servers, they just shut them down. I think there was another game for the PS3 that was similar. Um, it happens, but that's one game. In this case, Nintendo's shutting it off for all games that use wire- the wireless connectivity for playing with playing online with friends uh do you guys realize that every other system or every other next gen system in the last what four years or more 
still has their systems up, still can play online with other friends. I've got an Xbox 360. I can still play GTA 5, for instance, with other friends if I want to. Not a new console. I think if anybody else followed suit with that idea, that probably would get the same backlash as Xbox or as Microsoft did when uh, they tried to put DRM on the Xbox One. Anyway, just the opinion. Um, and then the last thing, this one's going to be quick because I'm already running on 10 minutes here, but even then, uh, there is... This had been... I'd seen this a little while back. Um, it's basically a... It's almost a, it takes the work out of doing life blogging. So the premise is it's just a little square about I don't have anything this big, but like say about half the size of a memory card reader or even about about yay big. I mean it's looks about that big. <clears throat> and you just clip it on your shirt and it will take a picture repeatedly throughout the day, every thirty seconds actually. And it's not like it's noisy or anything. Nobody will know what it is, except they'll see this white square on your chest or wherever you clip it onto um, and go, well, what's that thing? So, of course, with that, there's, surprisingly enough, there isn't the biggest of concerns like there is with Google Glass, for instance. Everybody seems to be much more concerned with Google Glass than they than I've seen most people will talk about this. Uh, this is called the... Narrative clip, apparently. Um, I thought it had been called something else. There may have been another rendition of it earlier. I think it was on Kickstarter a while back. The price is just about the same. Actually, it's a little more than the, for this, but... Um, yeah, every 30 seconds it takes a picture. So I can walk around all day long and then get home, plug it in, and see all the pictures or where I went or what I did throughout the day. So... For those of you who have not so great memories, perfect. Or for those of you who want to pull up snapshots from your days or whatever the case may be, it sounds great. The only problem besides the privacy issue is, of course, the fact that, well, if you're actively moving, it, the pictures aren't the greatest. So for 279 bucks, don't know that that's really worth it. Um, because three quarters of your pictures, at least from what I could see on this the review that somebody had done, this one was on, this was actually on NPR.org. Um, cool or creepy, a clip-on camera can capture every moment, is what the name of this article was. And it's a neat idea. I think there there's, the idea of, there was actually on Kickstarter a GPS cookie, I think is what they called it. And it was actually more interesting and much less invasive for everybody's privacy. Because when you get into pictures, you're getting taking into account all of the people who don't want to have their picture taken. All the people who just aren't comfortable with the idea that they could be recorded at any time. Same thing with voice recording. There is apps on iOS that allow you to just sort of keep a buffer of five minutes, for instance, and hit the stop button or hit the record or save button and anything that had been recorded in the last anything that had been done literally in the last five minutes audio wise would have been recorded so i could leave it on my desk let it go for five minutes have a conversation during that time with anybody and they wouldn't know and hit save and then that five minutes that just happened would have been recorded so there's that privacy concern but on top of everything else $279 for a camera that can't take a solid picture because you're always moving seems a little pricey. I'd rather almost just have some sort of self-timer. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a great uh, selling plan. But at the same time, uh, if the pictures were decent enough, uh, at least the pictures from... The article don't seem to be too bad, but I think that they actually had just picked out the good ones from the day. But anyway, so those were some of the things that I found interesting this week. Um, definitely regarding the Tech Syndicate video on how ISPs want to destroy the internet, please share that message. Um, and keep in mind that Comcast, Verizon, 
all of those cut all of those ISPs out there, um, DSL companies, AT and T, etc. All of them can see what you're doing. So, if you don't care about privacy, given that there is enough worry and concern with the NSA nowadays that most people may not care, I certainly didn't care for a long period of time. But um, now it's not for that purpose. For the in this case, it's for the purpose of. I would like to get what I should be paying for. So I'm paying for a 50 meg 10, 10 up package. I should be seeing that across the internet if the pipe is there. And I don't understand why, for instance, something like Netflix that's in Amazon's cloud, which I've never seen much of an issue speed wise with trying to get the max out of it is going to run into that issue. Netflix has even offered hardware to Comcast so on, uh, so that they can cache the content. Comcast said no. So it's just allowing for them to extort these companies that have lots and lots of data to be pushed through their pipes. And it's not Netflix's fault. Comcast's network may be saturated. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. So until next time... Good night and good luck.